I think he's going to be working in the next couple of years on a project for to to create uh, a GPI figures for every country in the world, mm. which is wow. something nobody's done before. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. Let go there. Let, let me ask you, what would it take to get an indicator like that to not only be adopted, but to become the primary driver for assessing economic activity? I mean, you can answer that after you tell me about it, or you can answer right. it before. Uh, well, I could start with it. Uh, one of the reasons why politicians don't like the genuine progress indicator is because unlike GDP, which tends to go up, you know, you get the odd occasion where a year or two where it, it falls, but it, it's, it's a general trend up. So that look, anything that trends up looks good. The genuine progress indicator for many developed countries has been going nowhere for about the last 20 or 30 years. So it looks like a bad news indicator. So politicians don't want to put up, flash up something on a screen that goes up for a period of time and then goes nowhere. They'd rather put up something that continues to go up. So that's why they like uh, GDP and they, they're a bit hesitant to uh, use the, the GPI. But the, what the genuine progress indicator uh, is an indicator that takes account of economic, social and environmental benefits and costs. And it treats benefits as positives and it treats costs as negative. So you add up the benefits and you add up the costs and you subtract the costs from the benefits. So the GPI is a measure of net benefit of economic activity. Unlike GDP, which uh, adds up everything, whether it's a benefit or a cost. So a good example was uh, at the state or provincial level, uh, GDP is referred to as gross state product. And uh, when the ex Exxon Valdez uh, spilled its oil in Alaska in the early 1990s, Alaska's GSP went through the roof because the US federal government threw all these resources at Alaska to help clean up the oil spill. Uh, assuming that uh, the um, Alaskan natural environment was restored to what it was previously, well, there was no, no betterment, they were, they were no better off, but Alaska's GSP went up, giving the impression that they were better off. Uh, so with the GPI, all those resources that would have been used to clean up the oil spill uh, are referred to as either defensive or rehabilitative expenditures. They're not included in the GPI. Uh, so environmental costs, which can add to GDP, uh, not in, uh, well, they're in fact, they're, they're counted as uh, Subtractions, or, or, or uh, so that you, you subtract from the benefits when you when you include the environmental cost, uh, the cost of unemployment. Okay, that's which is not taken into account at all with GDP. That's a, that's a, a, a negative item with the genuine progress indicator. The GPI takes into account uh, changes in the distribution of income on the basis that the extra benefits. Well, the benefits of extra consumption for a rich person are less than they are for a poor person. So if you took $100 a week away from America's or Australia's richest person, it would barely affect that person one little bit. But if you gave it to America's or Australia's poorest person, it'd have a huge impact on their well-being. So it takes into account the income distribution. Uh, it, it takes into account a lot of things, but it gives you a better indicator of the net benefits of economic activity. Now, the interesting thing about the GPI is when it, when it was initially calculated, it was calculated for a number of developed countries, European, North American countries, and eventually Australia. Uh, what it showed was that the genuine progress indicator from, let's say, the 1950s was going up in unison with GDP. And then it reached a point, depending on which country you're talking about, in the US, I think it was about the early 1970s, where the GDP continued to go up, but the genuine progress indicator sort of leveled out and has fallen and gone sort of nowhere since. So uh, as we were talking about before, uh, the increase in GDP doesn't seem to be adding to people's uh, well-being, satis life satisfaction, but Increased GDP puts additional stress on the natural environment. So environmental costs are going up. So economic benefits aren't going up that much, but environmental costs are going up considerably. So the cost 
of GDP growth are going up faster than the, the economic benefits, meaning the net benefits are falling. So it gives you a much better indication of what's happening in terms of the net benefits of economic activity, which GDP does not at all.